Hi guys, this is Wirehead King and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make the depth of field effect in Blender 2.56. Um, so, let's get into it then. You should know what depth of field is, otherwise you probably wouldn't have clicked on this tutorial. Well, actually, just in case you clicked on this tutorial thinking, I wonder what depth of field is. Uh, depth of field is, you know when uh, in movies and stuff, there's like two people talking, but one of them is like, you can see one of these people's uh, in fact, let's say there are two people talking to each other, but one of them's in a chair, uh, right up close to the camera, and another one's in a, you know, you know standing up, or in fact, you know, in a chair as well, um, sitting quite far back. When they start talking and stuff, you know, they're all blurry when, uh, you know, they're not talking, but when they start talking, you see the other person go all blurry while they're, you know, you can see them in high definition, crystal clear. Uh, that is basically depth of field, you know, where uh, something is blurry when the camera focuses on something else, and um, it's a really useful effect to know. So, if we add a modifier and uh, add an array modifier, uh, this is just something to do. You might have a scene uh, where you want it, um, where you want to add some depth of field. I just set it uh, the cube on the y-axis to 1.3, so that then. Uh, there's a little bit of space in between, but uh, generally, um, just there's just some cubes. Uh, I'm just going to increase the count to about ten. Do ten will do probably. Yeah. Um, yeah, that will do. All right. So I'm in front view now. Uh, if you press number pad five, we're going to perspective, but it's really exactly the same. Uh, if you press Control Alt number pad zero, that will just uh, snap the camera to this kind of location. I'm going to press G, X, and just move my mouse around. I'm just going to zoom it in a bit as well. Rotate it. In fact, actually, only a bit. Yeah, so it's been rotated. Um, I'm just going to quickly set up a scene. I'm going to change the horizon to black. I'm going to get rid of this light. And I'm going to add an area lamp. So, Shift A, lamp, area. I'm going to move it way back over here. Uh, Y minus 90. There we go. And uh, I'm going to move it way more backwards just so that we can definitely get everything in. Uh, just move it along so it's more central with the cubes generally. This one's just around the middle. Okay. So uh, now we're just going to uh, change the size of it to about 50. And that will just make sure that every single thing is uh uh what what do we call it uh you know in this little range of it so we're gonna increase the distance a bit just a bit further than that and the energy is going to be reduced to something really small like point two and um if we were to render this now because there's only one light uh you know, this thing doesn't have global illumination by default, so you're not going to see these little bits in the middle lit up, because all it's doing is uh, affecting these faces here. Uh, we're going to, if we just call this uh, uh, light key, what that does, um, well, well, it doesn't do anything, but basically, that's just saying this is the key light. So this is our primary light source in the scene, and we're going to add a little area lamp, and uh, I'm just going to move it back a bit and uh, set the energy to about 0 0.1 the distance can stay the same but the size can change to about 10 so we've got a uh, you know a big light over here and a little light here just to fill in what hasn't been lit up all right I'm also going to change the oh yeah I already have changed that so if we render this now we can see that we've got some cubes in the uh, kind of joined near the end I'm just going to uh, just bring this out some way. Um, that's fine, actually. All right, so we're going to want to make it. I don't know. Focus on this point here. Actually. So if we just rotate it a bit, so there we go. Um, we're going to go to this. Uh, making sure our camera's selected. We're going to go to this uh, picture of a uh, video camera thing, and uh, we're going to. Uh, click on limits that kind of activates the depth of field and we can de uh, so increase the distance or we can choose an object for it to focus on so if we choose a uh, camera it's just going to come way back just focus on itself Ugh, arrogant person 
and uh, you know if we just uh, if there's no thing selected we can just increase or decrease the distance so let's make a focus on this cube here if we just put a little um, arrow on top of it just to make sure that people know that it's supposed to be focusing on that cube uh, just uh, bring it out here I'm going to quickly form a little arrow just to make sure and merge at the center there we go just going to extrude it back so we know that ev uh, it's focus what cube it's focusing on there's going to be I think this is that one okay so uh... Okay. right what's this focusing on then yes it is that cube so we've got a little arrow there to prove it alright so when we uh... render this now we can see we've got our arrow there and we've got these cubes and it's focusing on that one well we can't actually tell that because there's no depth of field on it alright now you can go searching forever to try and find this depth of field but it's in the compositor so if we press control and left arrow we will go to the compositor, click on use nodes and backdrop when you click on backdrop you'll realize there's nothing but you're thinking where's my render well if we go to uh, shift a output viewer and just connect the image thing from the render layer into the viewer uh, anything that's yellow is either the output or the uh, primary input so uh, well actually these are outputs well all of these are outputs but uh, whenever it's yellow it's a primary thing so primary output primary input primary input um, so you know this is uh, pretty much of stuff so like let's say you've got a a node and it's got loads of inputs and stuff and you know you want them all to be mixed together you don't have to you know there's not loads and loads of loads you have to send out you just send out one and there's only one input allowed for anything but you're allowed as many outputs as you like you then connect them by mixing you know different tutorial so you know let's forget about it so with the backdrop we can see we've got our render thing now still no difference okay we're going to click uh, anywhere really as long as it's not way over here cause you, you know you've got like an invisible 2d cursor if we go to uh, uh, what do we call it uh, filter I don't know defocus that's what we're going to use it oh it's actually down there but still uh, you don't, mm, fail anyway uh, there was a time when you could just click there well I know that because it was on the uh, Sintel documentary thing on the DVD which I purchased from blender.org well actually I think it was Sintel.org technically but go to blender.org for all the details where you can buy it uh, you know they didn't pay me to say that because you know why would I I'm not gonna I'm not that type of person if blender said we will pay to say this I'm not gonna do it no one no one really well, that never works anyway so if we um, uh, like if we uh, you got the image plugged into this then put this primary output into the primary input of the viewer still nothing actually there is some oh no it's just stupid anyway um oh yeah if you just uh... because it's we only got one window and we're not really using these uh... you got this little render thing in the 3d viewport just click on this tab thing in the corner make sure that the arrow is pointing on well, it really doesn't matter um... but then with this do the same quickly click on it then quickly drag up uh, make sure the arrow is pointing whatever scene uh, that window you don't want and then there we go so I've got it full screen and you can see our image in all its for some reason grainy blur thing so yeah anyway um yeah uh, so we've got our defocus what we want to do is we want to stick in the Z or Z if you're in places that say Z and then you'll see that it's gone all horrible and you know, if any of you know what samples are, you're going to be thinking, well, I know what it's going to say next. You can increase the samples to 50 or something. No, I'm not. Don't be stupid. Why would I do that? Well, because A, it takes ages to composite, and B, it doesn't really make much of an effect. So you can leave that to 10. Well, 16, actually. Uh, we're going to untick preview and tick use Z buffer. Or Z buffer. Doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, and you can see we've still got nothing. <laughs> well actually it's got rid of that grainy thing that was a blurry thing which is quite nice anyway the lower you have the f stop the more blue like depth of field there is so if we just have it at the very minimum which is zero you're going to see everything blur apart from everything blur 
and go black. So we're going to want this to be you know, something like uh, 10. And uh, if we look far into the distance, you can see it's beginning to blur. And over on this front section, it's beginning to blur, you know. Uh, so um, all you have to do really is use some. Oh, it's gone a bit too high. Is um, if you've seen my IPO editor tutorial, link is here. If I remember to annotate it by the time you're watching it, otherwise it's not there. But anyway, you get the point. So, um, yeah, uh, you can see it's blurred over this cube. Uh, pretty much the majority of this cube is a tiny bit in the corner. Uh, that probably you can't see, and about half of this cube and the rest has gone blurry. Um, so you know, the lower you have that, the more blur there is. Um, so you know, don't go too over the top because eventually it just starts to look funny, and you know, even the things that you don't want to blur goes blurry. So just keep it at, um, around there. Um, if you want to make it, uh, just a quick little tip there, because I noticed when I moved it quite low, it kind of looked like it was kind of curving. If you do like that effect, but you don't want it to be that blurry, you can just go to, uh, distort, uh, lens distortion, and, uh, quickly stick that in there, and then the output into the viewer input, and distort, um, change it to, you know, whatever value suits you, you know, you can make it kind of distort inwards or outwards you know it's uh, that's quite a funny little effect but you know you can really um, uh, you know mess around with that uh, and that's also where you can get to chromatic aberration so click project and there's none what's that? oh yeah of course you need to increase the dispersion level anyway so yeah you can see we've got some chromatic aberration that usually looks pretty horrible uh, but you know, um, what can I say? It is my artwork. What are you expecting, silly person? Anyway, um, just uh, that's strange. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, that's it for my tutorial. I've taught you how to use depth of field, a bit about array modifying. I've made an arrow silently for you. That's all educational. No, it's not. Um, so yeah, I've also taught you how to get some chromatic aberration and lens distortion, depth of field, all that stuff. I already said that, I think. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Whitehead King. Uh, comment, rate, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, that sounded like I was singing then, when actually I was not. Anyway, uh, so yeah, leave them in the comments if you've got any questions. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, thanks for watching, and goodbye.